All righty. What's up, everyone? What's up? Welcome back to the Sell Better Daily Show. We're going to get started in just a minute. In a minute. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, before we get started, uh, Tom, while we're waiting for people to jump in, as I let you know on the pre-call, I just like to ask a quick icebreaker question while we're waiting for people to jump in. Uh, so what is one thing that you are excited for, either personally or professionally, that's coming up? Man, something, well, I'm getting married in two months, so I'm pretty stoked about yeah. that. And we're going on a honeymoon the day after the wedding to South Africa for two weeks. And uh, I've never been to Africa. Uh, I've never been on like uh, taking, especially since starting my own business, taking two weeks off and, you know, getting outside oh, yeah, of, uh, uh, you know, off the grid. So I'm looking forward to all that, man. What about you? That's huge, man. Um, I am going to North Carolina next month, which I'm excited about. So that'll be cool. Never been there. Uh, we're going nice. to check out Myrtle Beach as well. So just looking forward to that. Um, but cool. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, we still got people jumping in, so we're going to give it a second. But as you guys are jumping in, let us know in the chat where you're calling in from. Um, I'm over here in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. Tom, you're in uh, Chicago, right? Beautiful city of Chicago, Illinois. Yes, sir. Nice, man. All right, we got Miami, Florida in here. We got Milwaukee, Ontario, another Miami, another Tampa. What's up, Captain Tar? Nice name. Um, real <laughs> quick, guys, in the chat settings, um, I, I often forget to tell people this, but please change your chat settings to everyone and not just hosts and panelists. Um, that way we can all see your questions or your comments and questions. And then also you'll see the Q&A button at the bottom. Please put all of your questions in the Q&A. We're going to spend the last 10 minutes or so answering all of your questions. So please put your questions in the Q&A. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get to them. Um, and before we get started, we're going to throw up a poll here real quick. We want to know who is in the room. Are you an SDR, an AE, a frontline manager, senior leadership? I'm always curious to see who's in the room. I know this is a prospecting focused show, so we'll probably have a lot of SDRs. But go ahead and fill out that poll and we'll get right back to it. Um, and we're going to jump right in. So this is a part two. Tom did a show, I believe it was a month or two ago, around proven outbound strategies for winning over prospects. He did a live session with James and it was really exciting to see. And so we're back with a round two. This time I am hosting. Uh, really excited to get into it. Uh, my name is Jed Marley. I'm the founder at Practical Prospecting. I'm here with Tom Alamo. He's the founder at TA Sales. Tom, I'm going to let you really quickly tell the audience about um, a little kind of gift you have for them and what's coming up and then we'll get into the rest of the show. Yeah, sure thing, Jed. So um, one of the things that I do is I run a 30 day boot camp uh, that helps uh, people to build the outbound prospecting uh, strategies and systems that they need to be successful. So a bunch of great guest speakers. We do a boot camp, live calls, uh, implementation over 30 days and sell better customers or sell better participants on these webinars actually get 20% off of a uh, sign up for the boot camp. So our next cohort starts the first week of August on August 5th and hope to see anyone there if they're impressed with uh, what we uh, pull out today on some of the prospecting. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to get a sneak peek of that in today's show, but definitely check that out, guys. We're going to drop a link in the chat. We'll mention it at the end of the show as well. Um, I've known Tom for a while. It's really good stuff. So I would definitely recommend taking a look um, and take advantage of that discount as well. So um, also real quick, if you guys didn't know this, we call the daily show for a reason. We do this every single weekday. We're pretty much every single weekday. Um, go to the website to check out our upcoming shows, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we always like to provide free resources to our guests here, our participants on the show. So we're going to drop a link in the chat to a practical prospecting guide that I created not too long ago. It's essentially seven steps. I pretty much codified everything I've done to build um, successful SDR teams at previous companies. And what I'm currently doing, it's all in one document for you guys to steal for yourself. Um, so check that out. We'll put a link in the chat. Um, but for today's show, here's what we're going to get into. So we're going to go over uh, key research tactics you should be looking for uh, in your prospecting process. Um, we're going to talk about what channels you should be focusing your efforts on. And then finally, we're going to get into a live walkthrough of Tom's, uh, Tom's prospecting process. Um, and from what I hear, he's actually going to be prospecting me. So it'll be really fun to watch. Uh, and real quick, I'm going to end the poll here and share the results uh, not surprised, exactly 50% of you are SDRs and BDRs. We got 30% AEs and shout out to the managers and leaders here on this call as well. Um, so Tom, before we get into kind of the live prospecting and everything, uh, Tom made a post, I guess it was yesterday. Um, I think it was talking about kind of 10 different rules or, or things that he's followed to be successful when it comes to outbound. Um, I think we'll, we'll maybe drop a link to that post, but 
talk us through before we get into the live prospecting, talk us through these 10 rules here. I'll have some questions and everything, but how have these helped you and uh, why should these be important to the audience as well? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I came up with these just over the course of, you know, I've been prospecting cold calling, cold emailing for 10 years now. Uh, you know, started slinging cut code knives. If you know that Jed back when I was in, in yeah. school, uh, into, you know, software sales and working at Gong and now doing some trainings. And I found that from my experience and, and working with other teams that these are tried and true. If you're selling B2B, if you're, if you're selling you know, to pretty much anyone and you're, there's a lot of, you know, just fundamentals here. So I can, uh, just kind of comb through some of these and you can feel free yeah. to like interrupt me or, 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 you know, challenge me wherever, but, um, yeah. You know, the first thing is I always want to start with the problem that I'm that I'm uh, talking about. Uh, so oftentimes when I'm coaching sales reps and I read their emails or I listen to their cold calls, they lead with their company, how their company won an award, how their company is fast growing, how their company is, you know, has a great case study with someone. And the truth is that no one really you know cares about you or your company unless you can help them solve a problem. And in today's environment, You've got to be able to solve their probably their top number one or two problems or priorities, or you're not going to get the attention of buyers, especially executives. So I want to be really, really crispy about what that problem is going to be. Shout out to Captain Tar who sold Cutco in 1969. Respect to that. Uh, wow. Number two <laughs> is, uh, you know, I always want to lead with a trigger. Trigger, I mean, what's my reason for reaching out to Jed uh, right now? So it's not enough to say that Jed is a CIO. I sell to CIO, so I'm going to cold email Jed. I want to find something that indicates that there might be some sort of interest. Uh, on average, only 3 to 5% of buyers are in market for what we sell. So what is queuing up to me to make a hypothesis that, you know, Jed might be in market? You know, it could be he's hiring, you know, people on his team. It could be a, a post I saw. It could be going through his company, uh, you know, events or a 10K report or financial report. There's, you know, an endless number of ways that you can try to find that info, depending on what you're selling. But you want to lead with, you know, something that shows that this is a high value prospect. Um, yeah. The third, this is really related to, you know, a little bit to emails, but mostly to calls. Um, you know, when, when we're talking emails, the length matters. But, you know, in all of human communication, Jeb, 55% of it is done through body language. 38% is done through our pace and our tonality. And 7% is in just the words that are said or written. So, yeah. you know, when you're prospecting, if you're sending an email, all you have are the words, right? You, you, you can kind of do tonality a little bit, you know, but most of it is just the words. When you're making a cold call, you don't have body language, but the majority of what your message is, is your tone. Right. So how slowly are you speaking? Are you speaking with a low part of your voice or a high part of that's going really fast and, and, yeah. and you know, choppy like this? You know, and are you speaking with confidence? Are you stuttering? Are you pausing? All of that indicates, you know, right off the bat, subconsciously to a prospect, how confident and how seriously they might take you. And so that is, you know, in my opinion, more important than nailing the specific opening line or whether yeah. you should use permission-based or not permission-based openers or all these debates is, is really like, what can you say with the most confidence to get your foot in the door? Yeah. I want to pause you right there. Cause I completely agree with that. I think I, there's a lot of debates. And I, when, when I've coached SDRs, I had SDRs to my team, it's always like, what's the best opener I should use. And it's like, I think you should just pick whatever feels most comfortable to you because the more you say it, the more you're, the, the better your tone's going to sound. And what I see happen a lot is people will change their opener like every month, every other week, and then it's like you're starting back from, you know, ground zero because you have to like rework on feeling comfortable with that. I'm just like, I guess a quick tip if you have it, because I personally think that coaching people on tone or like developing your tone is probably the hardest thing to teach. Like you can teach somebody how to say something differently. But how have you personally gotten better at like your tone when it comes to cold calling or coached other people on improving their tone and pace from when they're cold calling? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a few things. Um I, I learned from a performance psychologist that confidence, I think tone comes from confidence. It's hard to fake it. And there's yeah. confidence comes from three places, I think. So one is your past experience. So it's just a matter of like sets and reps. Your your thousandth cold call is going to be better than your, your second cold call. Um, you know, the second is in your level of prep. 
So if I know what I'm going to say to Jed roughly before I make the call, you know, I did some research. I've got a, I've got a good idea of, okay, Jed is running the outbound sales at sell better. I know what sell better does. I can feel a little bit more confident if, when I've done that prep work. Um, and then, you know, the third thing is what you say to yourself. So, you know, do I, am I having the mentality going into that call that, Hey, I'm one call away from booking a meeting. You know, I know I've got a great potential solution for Jed. You know, I'm going to do my best. Or am I afraid that what it was Jed going to say, Jed's this really great sales leader. You know, is he going to think that I suck at cold calling? Is that going to be embarrassing? Are my teammates going to hear me get hung up on? And if that's what you're saying to yourself before you make a call, it's really hard to come in with the right tone. So um, those are the three things that I, I think about. And like, you might want to get some hype music going for number three, you know, yeah. get, play some young Jeezy or something, get you going and get you like in a good attitude, standing up, something like that, that can help, you know, give you a little bit more energy too. Yeah, no, I love that. Before we get into the fourth one, real quick, let me know in the chat, guys, what is your sales hype song? Uh, I'm very curious to hear what you guys listen to to get hyped up before cold calling. Uh, but before we get into the fourth one, which is using multiple channels, I want to throw up another poll here because I'm always curious, especially not in 2024, because I always feel like it flips, but I want to know, what channel are you using to get the most meetings? Is it email? Is it phone? Is it LinkedIn? If it's something else where you're getting the most of your meetings from, let us know in the chat. Um, but I feel like I see it flip all the time. I'll see people talking on LinkedIn, like email's best for me, and then it's phone, and then it's LinkedIn. But very curious to hear about that. But Tom, uh, while people are filling out that poll, go ahead and tell us about this fourth one here using multiple channels. Yeah, I'm loving seeing the uh, I'm loving seeing the, the pump up songs from people too. Uh, so the fourth, using multiple channels. So, um, you know, there, there's two thoughts to this. Number one is there's data that shows that your outreach, uh, from what I've seen at least, that is 5X more likely to get a response if you use three different channels versus just one or two in your prospecting. I, that, there is a study. It was either outreach or sales loft. I, I'm not, I don't remember which one it was off the top of my head. Um, so, you know, email and phone are the two most common. And then you throw a third one in. Oftentimes it's social. If your buyers are on LinkedIn, that's common. But I do know people that use uh, Facebook. Some people use Reddit. Some people use events, communities, a whole bunch of different other channels, direct mail, video. So, um, But using multiple channels is just more likely to actually surround sound and be able to break through the obscurity of, of them not knowing that you exist and try to catch them at the right time in the right place. Um, the fifth rule that I have is to sell like a scientist. So uh, oftentimes we get so hung up as salespeople that we want to just, if something works, we're going to beat it to death, right? I get one meeting off a of LinkedIn DM. I'm going to send that same exact message to 500 other people that look like that person. And mm -hmm. the truth is that you might've gotten lucky. That might've worked. That might be your next big breakthrough, but things change all the time. And so the best salespeople treat what they're doing with outbound as an experiment, like a scientist would, right? So, a scientist doesn't get bummed out uh, or get too emotional about what the, when they're running an experiment, right? They have a hypothesis. They run the experiment. If it works, great. If it doesn't, they're going to change a variable and run it again. Change a variable, run it again. And so you can't just have static sales sequences or the same emails you've been sending since 2018. Your buyers change, the market changes, so you need to evolve with it and keep testing and looking for the data to, to make it better. Um, yeah, man. shout out to Carlos on hustling <laughs> real quick, Tom, I want to share the poll results here. Um, yeah. I'm going to share results. All right. Everyone should be able to see it. Uh, I, I can't say I'm surprised here. Like it's a 50, 50 split split between, uh, email and phone in terms of like being even with where people are getting most of their meetings, 16% from LinkedIn. Uh, two of you answered a different channel. I saw one of those was conferences. That's awesome to see. I definitely think now, like compared to two years ago, for example, conferences are super underrated as well as like virtual events is a good place to do it. But for the second person who answered a different channel, uh, let us know in the chat, where are you getting most of your meetings from? Cause I'm curious about that. Um, but awesome. I appreciate you guys filling that out again. Not super surprised email and phone pretty much tied. Um, but Tom, feel free to continue on with the, the last five here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So number six is uh, to stop winging it. So, uh, you know, some of the salespeople on this call might feel like you wake up in the morning, you step up, you know, into your home office, or maybe you go into the office, you fire up the laptop, it's time to make your cold calls or send your cold emails. And you're just, you're, you feel like you're winging it. You feel like you're flying by the seat of your pants. And you see, man, I've got 102 tasks overdue in my sales engagement. 
I've got an hour to bang out all my cold calls. Where's my research? I can't find it. I'm, I'm, I get on LinkedIn. Now, 22 minutes later, I went down the rabbit hole on the news feed and I wasn't productive at all. And so the best salespeople put up guardrails around this. So a few things that I do that's very tactical. Number one, I always prep the day before prospecting. So I can step up if I've got a call block from nine to 10. All I'm doing in that hour is making calls. I'm not bouncing between LinkedIn and you know Google and you know ChatGPT and all these places. All I'm doing is one thing at a time. I turn off distractions. So my Slack's off, my Gmail's off, my phone's in do not disturb. So I can just really focus and get the most amount of you know, uh, outbound that I can in the limited time that I have, especially for the AEs that are time strapped. Uh, I do a calendar block that I do, do not move unless it's an emergency. Um, you know, and I treat it as the most important meeting of the day. Um, and then the last thing, which is a little counterintuitive is I reward myself. Um, and I'm not going to get all Huberman on you, Jed, but there is some <laughs> data that shows that when we reward ourselves after doing something hard, it makes, it creates this, you know, some brain waves that makes it more likely for us to want to do it again. So mm. I used to be terrified of cold calling um, when I first started. And over time, I've, I've actually come to, you know, I don't know if I'd say I love it, but I definitely, uh, you know, I do it a lot and I, I can get some enjoyment out of it and I can, I can get the thrill out of it. Um, and so if you feel reluctant or scared or anxious about some of this or defeated, try to set a number of, hey, I'm going to make 25 calls, for example. After those 25, I'm going to call, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to grab a coffee. I'm going to pet my dog. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to scroll Instagram for five minutes, give myself a dopamine hit, and then you're more likely to want to step back up to the plate next time. Yeah, no, I love that, man. That's great. Um, yeah, let's continue on with the last four here, and then we'll we'll jump yep. into the, uh, the live. Yeah, I'll make it. I'll try to make it uh, quick, too. So number oh, yeah, seven, no turn it into a habit. So I think that prospecting is very much like exercise where – you know, when I show you how I'll prospect Jed, um, a lot of this is not rocket science. It, it may be things that you've done before or that you've seen before. The beauty is in the consistency. So I would rather be consistently good than occasionally great. So mm -hmm. for me, the key is how do I get my outbound time in every single day? If I'm an AE, how do I get 60 minutes? If I'm an SDR or BDR, how do I get a couple hours in where it's focused time and I can do it every single day. Um, you know, something that Jerry Seinfeld used to do when he was writing jokes was every day that he would write jokes, he'd put a big red X on his calendar. And there's a kind of a psychological component to once you start seeing two, three, four, ten 10 red X's in a row, you don't want to break the chain. So they, it kind of kept him going to stay consistent, even if it was only for 10 minutes a day, he just wanted to show up and not have a, have a zero type of day. So Try to do the same thing with prospecting. Uh, number eight is playing money ball or, you know, sometimes I call it sales math. Um, a lot of sales leaders will say, you know, you'll have activity metrics. And, you know, if Jed's my leader. He might say, Tom, I need you making 50 calls a day and sending 50 emails a day. And that's generally a good start. I'm, I'm pro activity metrics. But the next level to that is understanding what is your actual money ball as a sales rep. So, uh, you know, for example, I might look into my sales engagement and see, you know, it takes me 100 emails and 200 phone calls to book a meeting. And I might back into what my meeting quota is or what, how many opportunities that I need to book every week to understand what my metrics should be. So if Jed says I should do 50 and 50 um, and my math is telling me, actually, Jed, like, man, I, if I do that, I'm not going to hit my goals. So I might need to get 70 emails and, you know, 38 calls. It might be just different numbers that I'm going to do to try to focus more on the inputs that lead to the outputs. Um, so I've got, I don't know, I think yeah. I've shared it with Sell Better, but I could, I could share it again if people want. I've got like a spreadsheet that people can use to try to figure out that sales math. Oh, um, yeah. And then the last two that I got uh, are, you know, number nine, we don't stop short. Uh, so there's a story of, uh, this guy that, you know, during the gold rush in the United States in the, in the you know, a uh, hundred years ago, this guy went out West and searched for gold to make a bunch of money for his family, spent, you know, weeks and weeks digging around and doing all the things to try to find gold. He found nothing and he went back empty handed. 
Later on, a, a different guy came around in the exact same location. Um, he maybe yeah. just had some better tools or, or went a little bit deeper. Three feet below where this other guy was digging was this whole, you know, pot of gold, you know, so to speak, that, you know, made him a very, very wealthy person. And, um, you know, the, the kind of metaphor that I get from that story is, you know, that guy was doing the right things. Uh, he was doing it all right, but like he just didn't go deep enough. He just stopped a little bit short of where he needed to go. And so where I take that to prospecting is that, you know, it takes eight to 10 touches generally to get the attention of a cold prospect. So we can't think that sending one good email is enough or, you know, sending a voicemail and adding someone on LinkedIn and viewing their profile and doing that to a thousand people is going to book us a ton of meetings. Um, I, I think especially right now in the world of AI, in the world of extra automation that I'd rather do, I'd rather do fewer contacts, do them a little bit deeper with a little bit more personalization. I'm seeing that personally work better than a little bit more of a wider audience with more automation, which I was doing it, you know, in the last few years. So um, I'd rather go a little bit deeper with each prospect. Um, and then, you know, the last rule is just like, try to have fun and be a learning machine. Understand that if you're working for a company, uh, you are getting paid to learn, you're getting paid to get better and try to have that, you know, try to create some lane where you can have fun. Like I've got this gong, if you can see it uh, over my sick. shoulder. So I got that when I worked at gong. And so every time I close a deal, even though it's just me and my dog, Jack here, I banged the shit out of that gong. I don't know if I can yeah. say the S word <laughs> on the, on the sell better show, but I did anyways, uh, <laughs> because you know, that hypes me up and I'm like, man, that felt good. I want to go do another one. And so, what can you do to just make it fun? Like create a little competition with yourself or with a friend on your sales team or, you know, something like that or, or with your significant other and say, hey, if I book two meetings today, you know, uh, we're going out to dinner. We're grabbing cheeseburgers tonight. You know, just something to keep the energy going. If you're working from home and you find yourself in like the summer slowdown and monotony, to me, like enthusiasm is everything in a sales job. And if you don't have that energy, then, you know, you're going to show up feeling lethargic, you're going to skip tasks, you're going to phone it in early. And it's, it's hard to deal with the ups and downs if you don't have that enthusiasm. Yeah, man, dude, that was really good stuff. I want to share this. Uh, yeah, treat yourself. Exactly. Um, I want to share this one more time. Let us know in the chat. We're about to get into uh, my favorite part of today's call, which is where Tom is going to do uh, basically live prospecting from scratch. But looking at these 10 different rules and Tom, uh, first of all, man, I love the stories and the metaphors and the examples that you share for each one. I think that was awesome. But let me know in the chat, everyone listening, which one you resonate with most. Put the number in the chat that you resonate with most or that is the most impactful for you that you think you need to apply starting now. Um, let us know in the chat. And then, Tom, let's get right into it. Um, if you're ready, we can get right into the live prospecting um, and kind of show the people what uh, some of these different tips look like in action. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So I will share my screen. And y'all, this is the real deal. So I've got a couple tabs here open, as you'll see, but I don't have any pre-written emails or LinkedIn messages or you know, phone calls or anything with Jed. So here's how this is going to work. Um, I've got this Google sheet here that's got just a couple notes that I'll talk through with y'all. And I've got spaces where I can write an email, I could write in a LinkedIn message, and I can write in like what I might say if I called Jed. Okay, so this, we're going to do this live. So the first thing that I would do, and Jed, you cut me off anytime if you want to make some comments yeah. or uh, ask questions or anything. Absolutely. So before I, I do, do anything, um, if I'm in a, if I'm in a you know, sales role, if I started a new company, the first thing I want to do is I, I want to fill out this sheet. I'm not going to do this whole sheet because it'll take me longer than you guys want to watch me, but I need <laughs> to get really crispy on my problem. So Jed, if we go on Jed's LinkedIn real quick, Jed does a ton of stuff, guys. Jed's a busy, busy man. But I'm just going to, for the sake of this, I'm going to say Jed is the VP of sales at Sell Better, right? That's one of the things that he does. And that's the, uh, he's trying to get more sponsors to this show. So um, that's, that's what we're going to use in terms of the context of trying to book this meeting. So let's say that I'm someone that might be able to connect Jed to better, you know, sponsors in, in sales tech and in marketing tech. Okay. So, um, Jed's a VP of sales. That's his persona. Um, and I'll even just talk through, I won't even fill out this whole thing. But what I want to understand is before I go talk, trying to figure out an email, what is Jed, what goes on in Jed's day to day, right? So Jed's a VP of sales. 
at a, at a fast growing media company sell better, right? He's trying to land sponsors. And so, you know, in his day to day, he's trying to worry about trying to land new sponsors. He's trying to make sure that these sponsors are getting ROI on their shows. Uh, he's trying to understand, you know, which companies are, are sponsoring other competitors and how he can steal some of that mm -hmm. mind share. Um, you know, he's trying to figure out which new startups are coming up that want to, you know, expand their presence and uh, maybe come up with new opportunities for them that might be bigger and bigger packages that they can use to sponsor. Um, and so a problem that he has is that, um, you know, I would imagine that he's selling to marketers that, you know, are, are trying to get their exposure out of their company, you know, at, you know, sales, sales tech company number one. And, um, you know, a problem that Jed has is that it's hard to get their attention and um, there's a lot of competition for eyeballs, you know, marketers mm -hmm. at say, you know, we all know these sales tech companies, uh, you know, they're, they're potentially buying ads elsewhere. They're buying ads with LinkedIn. They might be sponsoring podcasts. They might be going to trade shows. They might be buying, you know, intent data. They might be, they're doing a whole ton of other stuff. So Jed is competing, not just with other shows like the daily show, but he's competing with all other things that a demand gen marketer at a tech company might have to deal with. So to me, that's a lot of stress. And that's a key moment of like trying to differentiate. Um, when I think about, you know, these other Sorry, things, I want to go with, a, yeah, go ahead. Oh, my bad. Didn't mean to cut you. Uh, I want to yeah. double down on that real quick. First of all, like two things. First off, a couple of people are asking for this template. Is it possible to like copy and paste these questions in the chat? Because I think this is awesome for folks to, uh, or yeah, even the link, whatever it is. Um, this is great. And then, uh, second thing, once you're done sharing that, um, I'm curious, uh, you know, w when it comes to number two, I think that's obviously an extremely important thing to understand before you reach out to somebody, uh, for folks who are maybe new to a company or they're selling a complex solution, look at all the, all the people popping in the Google doc there. Can you please um, just, just one quick note. Can y'all just please make a copy of this? You can oh, go to shoot. file, <laughs> you can go to file. And make a copy just because we're we're live here uh, doing this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> things could get crazy here. Uh, yeah. So my question was, uh, how do you go about determining what problems your solution solves? Like, how do you get down to like, because everybody describes the problem in a different way. So what are some things you've done at your previous companies to actually learn? How does my buyer describe their problem? And like, you nailed the problem, for example, for me precisely. Like you, you that was exactly the things that I'm, worried about the things I'm trying to fix at sell better, but how do you yeah. kind of figure that out? Um, you know, at the different companies you've been or the people you work with. Yeah. So a few things, uh, it depends on how big your company is. If you're trying to sell your first customer versus if you work at, you know, Microsoft, it's going to be different. But, um, if you have, uh, if you have a, a bunch of examples of customers, that's where I want to start. So I might go mm -hmm. to, uh, testimonials or case studies, um, I would go to Gong, you know, their Gong or wh whatever call recorder you might be using. Listen to calls from the last ten deals that were sold. Um, if you don't have something like that, I might go to G two or another review site and see why do people. I, I was struggling with X, then I bought Tom's training, and now Y happens. So I might look at things like that. Um, if we don't have any of that, um, that's relatively easy. It's out there. You could use uh, public info like ChatGPT and try to find. What are the top five problems of SaaS, uh, you know, sales tech demand gen marketers in 2024? Um, yeah. And then the last thing that I might do is I might go to that person at my company. So if I was at Sell Better, I'd go to who, whoever runs demand gen at Sell Better, and I'd say, uh, demand gen person, what what are the biggest challenges that you have? Like, get put, let let me understand what goes on in your world. Like, who do you report to? What do you struggle with? What comes up in your team meetings? Um, what do you get comped on? What it, you know? What are the, what are those things? And I'm just trying to get more and more ingrained in their world so I can speak their language better. Yeah, man. No, I love it. That's a great answer because I know that's something that people struggle with. Um, I'll let you continue on because we got we got oh no we got time we got 16 minutes so we're doing okay. good. Okay. Okay. Cool. So um, I have a pretty good understanding of. Uh, I, although I didn't type it out, it's hard for me to type and talk at the same time. We got a good understanding yeah. of uh, what Jed's problems might be, right? Or someone like Jed, right? I, I haven't met Jed in this example, so I don't know if he's got it, but a lot of other sales leaders at a media company would probably struggle with that. So that's one thing. The next thing that I want to go to 
is I want to understand um, at the, actually my, my uh, links are a little bit out of order, but the next thing that I'm going to go to is I want to go to the website and I go to sellbetter.com and I just want to get, get more familiar with the site so I can see, all right, we've got all these shows. We've got some free stuff going on. We got sales training, different people, reviews. So, oh, I see sponsor us here, right? So Jed cares about sponsorships. I click that page and I get a pretty good understanding of like, all right, what is he selling? You know, it's a high energy show. Here's the daily reg. Here's the audience, blah, blah, blah. Here's other people he's sponsoring with. Okay, cool. So like now I've got an understanding of like, what is it that Jed's actually selling? What does he care about? I'm looking for something that might ignite that. Um, you know, I might look in some of his shows and click through and see, okay, who's sponsoring this one? You know, okay, we've got Zoom Info sponsored tomorrow. I could go into a bunch of these shows and see who might be doing that to try to find some, some sort of trigger there, okay? The next piece that I go to, before I even hit up Jed, I go to Sales Nav. I have Sales Nav, I hope you do. And um, yeah. I go to the current company and I say sell better. And I just wanna understand, all right, Jed's the VP of Sales. I don't like to just reach out to one person at a company. So I want to find who else is there that might, you know, I might want to influence as part of this. So if I'm just kind of floating around, I see like, okay, Kevin's VP of events and operations, like he's interesting to me, you know, obviously CEO, I'm sure Jed reports to Christopher here. And that's someone I want to get in touch with. Leslie does VP of sponsorships. So she must work with Jed in some way where they're both worried about sponsorships. Right. And so I might leave it to three to five people. I might filter if it wasn't so easy to find it here. I might filter by other people in sales. Uh, okay, I could see that. I might go into depart. Uh, excuse me. I might go into uh, seniority level. And Jed's a VP, so I might go to like C-suite. All right, we got Chris there. Um, I might just see. Hey, is there anyone that's like you know changed a job recently? Anyone that I might. Okay, that's Jed. That's great. So I might just go into some things like that just to try to build out who do I think the buying team is. I won't write everyone a message, but all right. So I've got a good understanding. There's Jed, there's Chris, there's Leslie. There's one or two other people that I mentioned that I might be all trying to research and all prospect to as part of this flow. Okay. So we'll stick with Jed for now. Can I mention the next thing I'm going to go is. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to break up your flow real quick, but Tom, if you go back to sales navigator, I personally haven't used these too much. I did notice that you've also got like past colleague and then there's following your company, these your profile recently. I imagine those are probably, I don't like, let us know in the chat or if you guys are using those at all. Um, but some of those might be interesting ones too, for like introductions. I know this is just a made up example, but um, I guess yeah. I wanted to point that out. Let me know in the chat if you guys are using any of those filters, because those could be good ideas for, you know, finding potential introductions or just more information about the the company. Yeah. Yep. This is great. You know, like the past colleague, the one that, I don't have because I run my own business, but when I worked at Gong and other companies is you could have the team link. So if, you, oh, yeah. if other people on your team use SalesNav, I could see who else is connected. So if, if I see Jed's connected to my VP of sales or a past customer, like that's always going to you know run me a better uh, response rate than if I just go to Jed cold. So I want to exhaust some of those, uh, those, those outlets. Um, Jed and I run in similar circles. So we got a lot of similar like, you know, places we've, we've, you know, worked, we've got 500 mutual connections, yeah. you know, this is not the normal kind of prospecting. So I'm going to pretend like those don't exist to try yeah. to keep it more realistic. Okay. So I've got my problem, you know, one or two things that I know about sell better. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is I just want to give a quick run through of like anything stand out to me about Jed that I might reach out about. And again, we all know Jed has more on his profile than the average buyer would. So we're going to try not to like, you know, make it too easy, but I just want to see like, all right, he talks about, you know, his career, what he's done. He's got some quotes. Okay, great. You know, he, he's got his newsletter, but really what I'm going to look at is like in his job. Okay. He's building the outbound sales motion. That tells me something tells me that, um, you know, maybe they're transitioning from inbound to outbound. There's some challenges there. He just started there, you know, four months ago, he's doing other content stuff. Um, okay, so it tells me a little bit about him. And this other fun place that I like to look is listennotes.com, where, you know, if, if Jed's a leader, I might type in, you know, uh, his name in sales and just see, has he been on any podcasts or something like that? I might go to Google News 
Um, anyway, I'm just kind of floating to you all a bunch of different ideas. If you know the information isn't super easy to find, I might also type in uh, Jed CEO's name into Listen Notes or into Google News and see can I find anything from any of these people. Again, Jed is out there in the street, so it's not hard to find info on him. Uh, and we love him for that. So it's pretty easy to find some stuff on him. So uh, let's just see. Let's keep this realistic. He's got a bunch of pods, but these are all showing up as like a year ago. Okay, he's on the Sell Better show, obviously. So I don't know. I'll just go to this first one. B2B sales show seems relevant. Okay. I can see what's going on here. Okay, so <clears throat> what I might go to here is my sheet that I'm gonna work off with y'all. So time check, 10 minutes. Okay, cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I, let's keep in mind, I wanna hit them on three channels. My best three channels uh, are gonna be email, LinkedIn, and hitting them on a phone call. Uh, personally, I'm gonna do all these on the same day because I'm trying to break through the noise. So I might say something. Again, I'm doing this in real time, so just forgive me if this is, you know, the 80% best version of the That's of an awesome. email, cold email that I could write. But I'm going to follow this flow. Make an observation. I'm going to talk about a problem. I'm going to present a solution, a call to action. And then sometimes I'll throw in like a PS or an either way and soften my ask a little bit. So I might say, you know, hey, Jed, um, you know, saw, you know, I saw that you, you know, recently landed as you know, VP of sales at Sell Better to help, you know, uh, actually, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to say, noticed in your new role at Sell Better, you're focused on building the outbound motion. You know, a lot of VP of sales or a lot of sales leaders I've worked with, you know, tell me that it's hard to, you know, differentiate with, you know, competing demand gen, you know, offers in the marketplace that can lead to inconsistent revenue, churn, and a bunch of. Dude, this is sick. Headaches. This is really fun watching. With <laughs> a bunch of headaches with uh, uh, on your weekly forecast call. Uh, I don't even know what product I'm selling, but it's like we uh, <laughs> we we helped. You know, ABC. I'm not going to call it a competitor of y'all, but we helped ABC Media Company um, land you know, multiple, you know, land, uh, uh, we help them. I don't What did we help them do? We help them, you know, uh, land multi-year sponsorship agreements with, you know, Salesforce. I'll call out a couple that I didn't see on the website, you know, not no. to say that these people aren't sponsors of the show, but, you know, Salesforce, whatever, let's say he cares about Microsoft and Apple, whatever it might be, yep. you know, open to a chat, you know, and then I'll throw either a PS and I'll say like, if I listen, what I would do if I had more time is I'd listen to five minutes of this podcast and I'd say, PS, loved your, loved your show on the B2B sales podcast and thought your, your point about X was cool. Since I'm not going to do that right now, I might say like, Either way, congrats on the new role and excited to check the show with Tom Alemo today, you know, and then, you know, whatever, sign off for me. So yeah, dude, I'll sick. say something like that. I'll add, you know, I'll add you on LinkedIn. You know, usually I, there's either one of two things. So some people like to just do the blank connection. I don't typically do that. I know this is another that thing that people debate over and over again. And I don't know if there's a right answer, but I might say something like, you know, hey, Jed, you know, caught, caught the show with Tom today. Good stuff. Just shot you a note with an idea 
uh, you know, that could help on, you know, outbound sponsor deals, you know, something like that, you know, look forward to connecting. There's probably too many characters, but yeah, you know, so I might trim this down. And then when I make my phone call to Jed, I do this. So I'll have an opener and then I'll go to uh, what is referred to as like a discovery menu. So I'll say something like, hey, Jed, you know, my opener is I say like this. This is Tom Alamo from TA Sales. Does that ring a bell? That's what I always said at Gong. And I've just always kept it. To, you know, I've just I've just gotten consistent with that. And he'll probably say no. If he says yes, that's great. I'll say, what have you heard? It's an easy conversation. He'll say, no, gotcha. Well, I'll say, you know, the reason for my call is I'll follow. I noticed, noticed X, you know, I'll go back to my research and I'll say, typically working with sales leaders, they struggle with ABC, does any of that resonate or are things working perfectly at Sell Better? And I give him a little bit of an out here, but if he says it's working perfectly, then I might just mirror him back like, wow, perfectly, tell me more. And I, would, <laughs> I don't hear that too often, right? But usually if I nail my problem statement, he'll be like, yeah, we are struggling with that. We wish we could get more multi-year contracts or blah, blah, blah. I'll ask him more. And that's, that's how I, how I'd break through uh, or try to break through on the first day. I would do all these on day one of a prospecting blitz. Dude, that was awesome. Um, it was just, I didn't <laughs> want to break you up cause I was interrupting you before, but it was really cool to watch you go through all that. Uh, a lot of people in the chat were saying some things as well. Um, a couple of things. Uh, so first off, uh, we didn't get any questions. Uh, if you guys do have questions, now's your chance. Um, cause we're about to wrap up in just a moment here. Um, Tom, folks were asking if you would share this in the chat. I know you've got some extra information in there. Are you cool with sharing this or if maybe make this, a copy? This doc that I just made you're saying? Oh, uh, yeah. I guess a lot of people are asking oh. for it. Oh, yeah. This is, yeah, go for it. You, you sure. don't even need to make a copy of this, I guess. You know, I'm just winging it. Mess it up. There you go. Um, <laughs> no, this is really good stuff. I guess, Tom, I just have one question. So I don't have other questions in the chat here and we'll wrap it up. Um you know, this, this process is awesome. I think when you're going through it and doing prospecting, um, are you doing it this way where it's like one by one by one where you're, okay, I'm going to go after this, uh, this person, I'm going to research all this stuff. I'm going to send an email, make the LinkedIn touch do the phone call step. Um, or are you like researching maybe five, 10 prospects at once and then executing, like doing the research separately and then executing on all the uh, activities after it, Does that kind of make sense? I'm just curious what your flow looks like. Cause I know everybody has different ways of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. No, great point. So the real flow that I would have was I would start with your, I would make a prioritized list of accounts based on my territory. Let's say sell better is one of those accounts. I find three to five contacts at those accounts, which I did. I would add those to my sales engagement tool. Um, and then that would put me into a sequence. And then I like to go one by one in terms of the type of task. So like I go in and I'll spend an hour doing the research and adding people to a sequence. And then I'll do a specific block for calls, a specific block for emails and for LinkedIn. And so I actually, it wouldn't look exactly like this where I did all three of these back to back. Um, I would have done my research ahead of time and then I would have made a call to Jed. Then I would have sent him an email. Then I would have done a LinkedIn and I would have done the same for the other handful of people at Sell Better. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. And yeah, I know we were just doing an example here from scratch. So just wanted to clarify that for the audience. Um, yeah, sure really good thing. stuff guys. We're at time here. Um, Tom, uh, thanks again, man. This was, this is one of my favorite shows. I love seeing somebody actually do prospecting completely from scratch live. So that was awesome. We're going to drop Tom's boot camp again. Uh, everybody here on the show gets 20% off of that. We'll drop the link to that. Um, go follow him on LinkedIn as well. Uh, Tom, thanks a lot, man. Anything else to say to the audience before we jump off? That's it, man. Hope hope you guys found that valuable and uh, feel free to DM me on LinkedIn if you have questions and appreciate you for having me, Jed. Always fun to jam out with you, man. Oh yeah, man. Anytime. Thanks everyone. I will see you guys later. All right. Take care. Bye.